Welcome to this edition of the Best Fleets podcast. I am honored and excited to have two very special guests here today from Garner Trucking. Uh, I have, of course, Sherry Garner Brumbaugh, the president and CEO and owner of Garner Transportation Group. And of course, Tim Krelsky, COO. And I want to thank you both for joining us. This is really exciting. And first off, congratulations coming off the uh, the big best leads win, not just, you know, Hall of Famers, but the big Stratosphere Award. Um, I have a question. I have a question. It was one that I was going to ask at the end, but I think I want to ask it now because I think it's going to frame our entire question, our entire sort of session here. And it's basically this. Over the years, I imagine Garner has changed a little bit in terms of the way you you know, run the business and the way you treat drivers and things like that. And so, as I think, as Jane said previously, culture is not a fixed object, but values are. So I'm wondering how, if you reflect on how the business has changed, how you've managed to sort of move with the times and yet stay anchored in something, does anything really jump out at you? Well, I think it's legacy. I'll, I'll hop in here. Uh, you know, both Tim and I have been uh, here for boots on the ground for quite a while. Uh, and it's certainly, I, the culture is something that uh, I inherited. Uh, I've, I've told many that I feel that I was uh, given a gift and of my parents' legacy. And it's my job uh, to make, to take care of it and make sure I take care of your name. Cause at the end of the day, you know, went the right way here you know it's your name <laughs> on the side of the truck and that's at the end of the day that's what you have and you need to protect it and and there's integrity involved with that and uh, people are the they make our business they are our family and you go back to I think our Christian values what I've grown up with and is treat others like you would have be treated un unto yourself and you know, that the golden rule applies, uh, even in business. And if you want to be treated a certain way, you should treat a person a certain way. And so that, that really is our, our rock. And we have built upon that. Now, how we're data driven and, and the kind of trucks, of course, that all has changed and we've had to evolve with that. Uh, but at the core, it's we're a family. We're going to take care of each other like a family and treat each other like we would want to be treated. Agree, Tim? Absolutely, I agree. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, the 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 change in development of the organization over the years. I guess I would focus on because you know that's um, you know Sherry's lineage is 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 the namesake and, and the inheritance and the, and keeping things going. Um, but speaking, you know, from strictly from an employee's perspective, uh, we've we've made tremendous strides uh, to be very attentive to our drivers, to our staff, and and make sure that their voices are heard loud and clear, and that we're navigating in a way that makes sense for both the business and for the employees that it affects. And um, it's been it's it's been a very long and and pleasurable road to 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 kind of watch the direction of the ship and how things have have changed over the years and um, hopefully improved as as uh, other senior members might say. Um, but I think uh, I think at, at its core, all of those fundamental values that, that that Sherry mentions are are alive, well, and and very active. So I want to touch on something that you, that you've both expressed, Sherry, you, you said that you've got to, you know, treat others, you know, the way that you would yourself want to be treated, but to do that, you know, you've got to, you got to have some understanding of, of where that person is at. And Tim was saying, you know, get understanding what's going on for drivers, you know, getting, getting feedback from them, how, and you know, a lot of companies out there will say, yes, yes, we pay attention to our drivers. You know, we give them a survey once a year. How has that gathering and understanding of feedback changed for you over the, over the years? And, and what sorts of things are you doing now to make sure that you got your, your sort of finger on their pulse? Walk in a person's shoes for a minute and you'll have a better understanding. Just try to. Now, 
I'm not a truck driver. I don't have my CDL. I don't drive a truck. Uh, but there has to be some level of understanding of what that lifestyle is like. Uh, I, I, it's, it's been a couple of years, but I'm, I'm committed to get back up in that truck, you know, and I go for a full week and feel, you know, what is, where their pain points are, uh, where they're going to our customers or challenges, and then just listen. And yeah, we survey our drivers. We survey drivers a lot. And I feel that what our mistakes are as an industry or any business that's asking for feedback is that we ask for feedback. You need to provide that results back and then you need to do something about it. it because just think of yourself, how many times you've been asked as a consumer to fill something out or you've, um, in many of things we get uh, asked to be surveys, you never hear the results of that survey. It disappears into uh, the void. Yeah. Yeah. And pretty soon you get a survey and go, nobody's listening to me. Why do I take the time? Hmm. So we, we want to give that feedback back, even if it's negative. I say to our drivers many times, we're not perfect. What, tell me a perfect organization and I'll try to model that. Uh, all I can do is control what I can control and then try try to do better. And sometimes it is, no, we're not going to do that. Um, but this is why. Yeah. You have to give the why. You're not that was my next question. Yeah, what do you do if the answer is no? You, you right. have to provide the why. Or it's, we need to do, and Tim can give you a couple good examples. We've been asked to have Wi-Fi improvement in our trucks for how many how many years? Like we need better connectivity. A couple of years. Yeah, better connectivity. And we keep, you know, we say it's it's not there yet, but this is what we're working on to get there. And so that's, we need to make these steps to get there and you need to help us <laughs> to get there. Right. So it's, it's, you know, putting some own, it's, sometimes it's come to best with a problem, not always, but come with us with a solution sometimes too. Now, I would, I would add Rick to that, that, um, you know, one of the, one of the, frankly, more successful things I think that has been put together in the last several years is the driver advisory board. Um, and I know a lot of companies do have some sort of committee or board or, or something that they that they use and, and refer to. Um, we meet on a quarterly basis with those drivers and, and have just an honest, open discussion. It's um, pretty free flowing, free flowing and, and uh, the information that comes out of there are nothing but action items, and you know some some will have uh, uh, positive results, some may have not so positive results. But um, you know, leading back to kind of everything that Sherry was touching on, you know, the communication is two way, and we're always reporting back. Uh, we keep a running tally of those projects and the things that we're doing, and and the things that we're not able to do, and the reasons why, so that they get a, a detailed explanation of that. Um, and I think that uh, as you start to inject drivers into different areas, different committees or um, different areas of the business so that you can get that that two cents, uh, which is extremely valuable, uh, I think the, the, the better off we've been. And, and, and we've worked very hard to do that over the years and, and find those areas where driver input is absolutely necessary before we do X, Y, or Z. So... It's true that that a lot of the companies in in the best leads program do have driver advisory boards. Um, fewer of them have multiple committees, but but when you look at the industry sort of more widely, it is not the case that a lot of companies have have those those sorts of things. So you said you know multiple committees. What what sorts of committees do you have, and how do you know when an area of the company needs one? Great question. Go ahead. <laughs> It, well, ours is unique. Of course, you know, before getting into the best fleets to drive for program, I, I've i shared that I kind of sat back and, and looked at what my peers were doing and they had, you know, the, the fleets that were in this program did have, were, they were gaining feedback from their drivers. And I wanted to do ours with a little bit of a twist and put the Garner touch on it. And we gave them a budget. And so you're going to spend capital dollars on some, and that's what it has to be. It has to be something, you know, capital dollars, you're going to purchase something for the betterment of the drivers. And so that's what we've done. And I would encourage all my peers when drivers have 
you know, uh, uh, control of some dollars to make some significance, it's, it's, they're, they're engaged and they're, they're like, okay, my input is being, there's some impact of my input. So that's a difference of ours, and it's an award-winning one. I mean, CCJ recognized us, and Tim uh, was part of that program that recognized us as an award-winning driver's advisory board. But also when we go to, it's sometimes a little bit more intentional in small group when we're looking at purchasing the next IT. You know, we, we're, we're, we're changing something in the truck. Uh, we're asking a small group of drivers to test something uh, before we make a decision. Uh, Tim's very good at that, of pulling uh, and being intentional of bringing in a new driver, uh, an older driver that might uh, not embrace a moder- you know, some new technology. Mm. So it's being intentional with that. And, and uh, that's been some of the areas that we've worked on. Wow. To get driver. And I don't know if you have any others that you can. Yeah. Well, I mean, our, even our, our truck specking um, yeah. drivers are part of that. Um, we have, uh, we recently formed here within the last couple of years, a donations committee. And it was uh, with staff. And uh, we decided that we needed to open that up and, and let that, that um, donations not only affect here in, in Hancock County, which is where Garner Trucking resides, but what about the surrounding areas or the things that are going to impact drivers that we may want to put some dollars towards or donate towards? So uh, we have a couple of drivers on the on the donations committee as well. Um, we just uh, we've we've had a wellness committee and it's a uh, full force and uh, looking to add a driver to that. I think that would be another uh, great place to have some driver input. committee has been great. I've been excited about that because it's going back to their community. <laughs> And an interest that they may have in whether it's a, a nonprofit there or it's uh, something they volunteered uh, for, and we can uh, extend our dollars back to their community. I only ask that they volunteer. They give their time or their talent or their treasure to whatever we're giving giving to. Right. Right. So that that extra bit of meaningfulness. So lots of companies will say, here's the charity that we're going to give to there it is but to be able to have the drivers elect you know yeah. where those dollars go to is yeah that much more meaningful yeah okay let's um let's let you brag a little bit <laughs> uh because i've got a, <laughs> i've got a list here uh, a mile long what is there was a I think about a white glove thing oh the garner white glove program mm-hmm. all right what is that what is that <laughs> okay well, I think it's, uh, again, making sure that the truck, with a new hire, the truck is ready to go. Uh, that That's number one, that uh, we have uh, the truck cleaned, uh, you know, fueled, uh, you know, new mattress if it's needed, uh, just, you know, having it clean. Uh, before a new hire gets into that truck. I think that's very important. First impressions are everything. Right. Even even the truck, I kind of, uh, and Tim hears me too a little bit. I'm like, okay, we're taking a driver out on a road test. Is it a clean truck? I mean, that that's an impression, you know, if you, if you take care of the, the truck. The other is the um, points of contact, you know, what the drivers have with their dispatch, with their maintenance. Uh, you know, their safety, direct contact with all those needs when they're out on the road. It's that I, I, I strongly feel sometimes, believe it or not, <laughs> our drivers aren't treated that well by uh, our either the motoring public or even our own customers or uh, wherever they, their, their travels may take them. But when they call home, they should have white glove treatment always. They, they, whatever we're doing, stop. It's after our trucking happens 24 7, 365. It doesn't happen eight to five, Monday through Friday. So it's uh, taking care of them when they call. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I, I also see that you're going to be adding, is this true? Adding uh, 401k profit sharing? Yep, it's in. Yep, it's in place. Uh, we've had, 
uh, financial planning uh, for for many years. I think that's health and wellness is important. Mm -hmm. Financial wellness is important. So we've had uh, services where they can have financial planning help uh, and through investments and, and, and planning for retirement and things like that. But there's just been this, there's a barrier for businesses in order to contribute to mm. personal IRAs and things like that. We can, we can take deductions if they elect to go to these um, investments, but we couldn't contribute to those. So uh, it, it became apparent that this was very important. Uh, and so we had a 401k plan that didn't have, and we closed that down many years ago because we just really didn't have good participation. And so we revisited it, opened it up, and now doing doing a match. And it's very popular. <laughs> this is interesting because I think I think historically, uh, many folks in the industry have said, and and I think there's there's a big glob of truth to it, that that drivers always haven't haven't always embraced um, uh, financial plan, like future financial planning, planning for retirement, things like that. Right? It's like put it on my paycheck now. I want to see the money. Now. And to their detriment, right? That's planning for the future is is super important, and it hasn't always been there. And I feel like I don't know if this is true, but I feel like there's been a bit of a change the last couple of years that that more and more that financial literacy is 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 creeping in. But but more is required. And so, do you find that there is more uptake, say now, than a few years ago, just in terms of learning how to manage money? Yeah, I hear from our drivers, you know, we want to retire with Garner. Great. We do too. <laughs> we want you to retire, you know, our staff. I want to retire here. Great. Uh, and when I have conversations with our employees, it's like, okay, the most important thing you have to work on now is replacing your paycheck. How are you going? Have you been on vacation? Yes. Do you spend more or less when you go on vacation? If it's, especially if it's a paid vacation. So what's retirement? It's a nice long vacation. You've got to figure out how to replace your paycheck so that when you go to retire, you don't have to worry about that. And so that's, that gets should get a person thinking because uh, Social Security can be a factor in it. It's not going to be all. Um, will it be there at the time that, of your retirement? Hmm. I had this, I had this suspicion. I don't know if it's true, but Sherry, are you the kind of person who's never going to retire? Yeah. Yeah. Don't listen to me. Cause I'm never <laughs> going to retire. Boy. No, I, uh, I feel like I need a place to go. <laughs> no, they would. Sometimes it's like, y'all, you don't need me here. You know, I'll just <laughs> go off into the sunset. Um, there'll come a day. There will come a day. Sure. Um, what is, maybe this is related. What's the Garner family network? That's uh, um, that's been an ongoing pet project. Um, over the course of the last few years, we've tried to build uh, a network that includes not only the drivers but their families uh, to be able to to, to be in contact, um, to use as a place of resource uh, in the event that you know they've got something maybe simple that's happened. Uh, uh, and a water heater went out. Uh, who can I call? That sort of thing. Uh, so a, a lane of communication. Um, we use the the Garner Family Network as a way to connect a bit uh, with <clears throat> different projects or activities. Uh, we do sponsor some some things throughout the year. Uh, you know, e e Easter Easter time we 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 had uh, uh, a little bit of a contest there. Uh, I guess the jelly bean count. Um, that, you know, just different little activities that, that engage the families along with the drivers, uh, opportunities to, to share successes, uh, kids graduating, um, and, you know, any number of things, a brand new baby, you know, comes into the world. Uh, so we use that platform, uh, with, with, with Facebook and some of our other social media, uh, to be able to, to, to promote those exciting activities that happen, um. And that's, it's been an ongoing project. Like I said, it, it, it takes time to build that. Uh, we see good participation from it. Um, 
you know, the more spouses or significant significant others you can get involved with it, uh, I think is is a good thing. And and it just creates another bond, another another area of connectivity um, that we can we can be a family together. Right. I, I want to ask something about the very I think one of the very first things that you said. Um, you know, a water heater goes out. So you're saying like if if a driver's family has a problem at home, there is a way that the company can help facilitate supporting them at home. Is that or one another? You know, right. so okay. others that are involved with that network that they can they can get together and just ask, you know, ask for some some favor or um some solution, you know. Um, you know, there's no there's no mystery there when when a driver leaves home. Uh, they're leaving some sort of gap on the home front, right. uh, regardless of who's left at home. Um, and uh, sometimes you just need to be able to reach out and, and get some help from someone in terms of finding a resource or problem solving a situation. And there's a lot of good advice out there. That's that's so as it happens, I'm single parenting this week while my wife's away on a trip. But last week it was the opposite. And I came home and I found out that she'd gone the whole week with a leaky faucet and she just didn't know how to fix it. So how to just, fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Those types able, of things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is, this is, or, this is, yeah, go ahead, Sherry. Or that I, you know, I have two shops of mechanics and they're very talented, not only with big trucks, but they know something about cars too. <laughs> and we've had um, some spouses come in with a nail in their tire and we've, we've helped them with that or, a, you know, this and that, um, I, you know, we want to be, be helpful in that regard. Mm -hmm. This, this is how communities work. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 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 I get it. I get it. All right. That. Um, I was looking at, at the list of, uh, so your scale of, of pay time off. And I want to ask a question about this because I've known a few people who run businesses in a few different industries. And what happened is, what happens is, is as say those offerings increase, Folks that have been there a long time get the value of, wow, it never used to be this way. But the newbies who come in do not know how could they have it. Do you mm -hmm. face that? Because I'm looking at, you know, what is it? Uh, three weeks after four years kind of thing like this, this scaling up. Do you have folks who come in and be like, or do they look at the rest of the industry and be like, oh, no, actually, this is this is really great. I think I think that's that's. An interesting question, especially, you know, I guess I, I say it a lot now, I'm becoming one of the old timers here. And, um, you know, going through kind of the, the roles and, and through the years, I know what that projection or trajectory has looked like. And um, it's it's really awesome. Uh, as, I, as I came in from driving to recruiting, I kind of had a plan in place at that time. And it's 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 taken a little while to, to to get things to where I go and maybe changes of position of power and, and things of that nature have helped that along the way. But um, to be able to shrink down that timeline that an individual can get paid time off and, and enjoy those benefits. I, and I don't know. I don't know that so much the new drivers um, look at it and think like, oh, this isn't good enough as much as the older drivers that will say, I waited 12 years for this, or I waited 10 years for this. So, you know, that's, that's the, you know, there's the rub there, but I think that they absolutely get why um, we've, we've had to change and develop and orchestrate some things a little differently over, over the years. And um, that's to, to everyone's benefit at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Can we, can we talk a little bit about the stratosphere award? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're still on cloud nine. I mean, we're still in the stratosphere. Uh, you know, we're right. We're, uh, right. So, so, it, you know, in years past for those who, who aren't familiar with the program, um, the, the top 20 fleets, fantastic. Among those top 20 fleets, we'll figure out, you know, which small fleet, which large fleet has the most points and they get an overall award. But then of course there are the hall of famers who have been doing this for many years. They kind of know what it's all about. They've got a system down. They're doing the thing. And this year, we decided, well, hey, who's the best of the best? And among the Hall of Famers, who is really hitting out of the park? And lo and behold, it was you. It was you. Um, how was that experience for you? Well, a little surreal. Uh, you know, we, I say every year from 
from the beginning when you know we we started the program it's made us a better better company a better organization i truly believe that and I, every year i just said we just need we got on stage the first time we just got to get on stage next year just get on stage just because we we improve ourselves every year because you can't be status quo i don't want to be status quo and so you know, even uh, being in the small carrier group when we won that category and then going into the Hall of Famers, which is a whole different, those, uh, you know, I looked at those, uh, you know, those trucking companies, I truly admire how they, they operate, how they take care of their people, how they take care of their customers. They are truly outstanding in their field. And to be among them, I, I feel very honored. Uh, and for this, when it, it was announced that there was going to be a stress here, I went, oh, <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good just, sitting on, just being there. I'm just good. And um, and now it's like, okay, how do we get to the stratosphere level? You know, what 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 do we knew, need to do that? I We went in to the, to the program, the award ceremony, the, the events, just enjoying the moment, being with our, our peers and being with, uh, you know, the Carrie's Edge staff, and uh, that that was enjoyable. The the Charlotte, you know, embracing Charlotte and the NASCAR. You know, we're I'm a big NASCAR person, so that was just right up my alley. And but, uh, you know, what really made it special for me, and I think for us as an organization, is bringing that driver with us. Um, it's something that I I want. It was on my on my list to do over the last couple of years, and it just seemed bright this year to 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 bring him along. And uh, he was so nervous. Uh, both Tim and I coached him going into that about you know it's you know you you'll be fine. He's a very very humble. Just he's a good man, and uh, just be yourself. Be yourself. It's not um, see this see how it is to talk in front of people. <laughs> And you anyway, you're not going to have to give a speech because the only way you have to give a speech is if we if we win and we're against this really stiff competition. Don't worry about it. You know, if you get have to Oops. speak, say these couple things, and and I gosh darn, didn't we win? Today? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were hooping and hollering and cheering him on, and I think he was he was very good and very eloquent. He did a great job. He did yeah. a great job. And I think there couldn't have been a, a, a sweeter way to bring in that, to introduce that award than to have a driver up there uh, mm -hmm. accepting it because it really captures the, mm -hmm. the essence of the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was wonderful. Wonderful moment. One of those I'll cherish. Yep, absolutely. So now a difficult question. I think, I think that... There are probably at least some fleets, maybe it's a safety manager, maybe it's a CEO, who knows, we're going to watch this podcast and they've never been involved in the program and, and they don't do a lot of these things and they want to know, where do I start? Where do I start? Like, I can't just magically create a driver advisory board or, or, you know, magically, you know, restructure my, my PTO, like. How do I, how do I start to be a little bit better? It's driver, it's, it's feedback. That's where you start. Mm -hmm. If you have a good foundation, uh, as Garner has, um, it becomes a matter of, of trying to figure out what your folks want, what they need, what's going to serve them best, and then do your best to, to execute and do those things and keep them involved in a part of the processes. Um, it's not that difficult to create a, some sort of advisory board with, with, with your fleet. Uh, what is difficult is taking the time to hear them out, make sure you understand what the needs are, be clear about what you can and can't do, and, and uh, do those things to your, the best of your ability. I, I think that everything else comes along from that point. Yeah. And you have to engage, have engagement from the top down. I mean, you have to, you know, you have to have uh, that uh, top level, uh, either owner or the, the decision maker that that's, you know, in the room listening. 
and and willing to make the changes that that are needed. Uh, we 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 have things to work on here at Garner. You know that's what gets me up to come to work here. There's things to work on, so uh, we we want to do that. Uh, we have we have driver turnover. It's why why are we having you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's been great to be in the, the the public eye here with the the award because we do get some get some you know I, we we saw you out there and we want to lift the hood really we lift the hood and see what you were kick the tires and see if you really are what you say you are right and uh, so I think too it's it's kind of like looking at anything that you want to change in your organization whether it's to bring in more diversity to your fleet or and improve your cents per mile, or if it's in improving your driver pay or your driver benefits, it's, uh, you know, trying. When you stop trying, uh, that's when I think you are not going to be an organization of change or influence hmm. or encouragement of, or attracting people to you. And trying to change is uncomfortable, right? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. But I, but I suppose, yeah. and maybe this, maybe this nicely brings us back to the, to the very first point is that if you're going to invoke those changes, you got to know who you are, right? You got to know know where you're standing and 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 who you want to be, and then move out from there and say, okay, these are the things that I want to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. fair yeah, enough. Well. So, the stars. <laughs> the stars. Uh, you know, well, congratulations. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. So someone said, so, so, so your stratosphere, what do you do after this? And I'm like, win it two times in a row. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> but we came back and, and, you know, we've, we've got our reports. We've, uh, those, uh, my peers that are looking at, come call us and talk to us. We, yeah, right there. You know, we're going to, we're going to sit down and debrief here next week and look at our driver comments and, uh, if there's some, some, I'm already thinking of some things that, that we can tweak and do and, uh, and see if we can get on stage again. <laughs> so this is interesting to me because there are all sorts of, of folks who didn't even make it on, on the top 20. They made it through, but, but didn't, didn't make it further than that. And then they, then they stop and they're like, well, I'll try again next year. But yeah. folks who win the highest award we have, take their game apart, figure out yeah. what they can do better. Oh yeah. And Every this. Yeah, this reminds me of like a, a a major league pitcher, right? They have coaches. They take their game apart. People at the top of their game still take advice. They're still trying to figure out, okay, how can I get a little bit better? So whether at the top there's, or whether at the bottom. There's a there's a, a, a very rich culture among um, the, the best fleets group. Uh, and while we're all competing, I think that we all care enough to want every other carrier to succeed. And as Sherry mentioned, and I feel 100% the same way about this particular program, is the, the trajectory and the changes that have happened and the adjustments that have been made are tied directly to being a part of this program. So if you enter one time and don't get on, on stage, which has happened to us, um, you've got to continue to, to, to continue that journey and take a look at the feedback and um, you know, Carrier's Edge does a tremendous job of having those conversations throughout the year, the how to's and in, in the engagement of, of what are some of the things that you can work on, you know, back to your point, Rick, you had, you had asked, you know, what, what are the things that, that you need to work on? What, are, you know, what are the things that you need to do? What's next? You know, that should be the spirit that should be the challenge. And, if you're able to do that year after year and still come up with things and, you know, I think that's pretty realistic. So if your first try isn't good, that's okay. You get in there and do it again and do it again and do it again every year moving forward and moving to that next step. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, we've been able, we've been fortunate to be able to do that over the years and that's, it does start at the top and, and uh, goes throughout the organization. Now, there's a real sense of pride over being a best fleets, uh, contestant and, and winner and, and, and all of the things that come along with that. But the best reward, and this is cheesy as hell, but it's the facts, is that we're watching an organization become better as a whole every, every single year. And part of that is thanks to a program like this one. So 
don't be discouraged. Don't, don't, don't let this be your first and only time. Couldn't have said it better. Well, uh, congratulations again on your big win. And I am looking forward as always, I'm looking forward to next year to see what you're going to do next. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and with any luck, up our sleeves. <laughs> with any luck, I will be the one who gets to interview you for the uh, for the questionnaire. Well, but, uh, so a little piece of advice to mm. to our peers, and and again, I'll reiterate what Tim said. We, I, I want our industry as a whole to be better. I, I want, I would love to see it expand. You know, more carriers uh, participate because I think it makes all of us better. Uh, but uh, you know, we, I, I don't do this on my own. You know, we look at um, eat. We have in each one of our segments of those we assign to uh, a, a discipline that has that's their area of expertise like HR or maintenance or operations uh, and and you know you you take a little bit a, a, a bite at a time right mm. and instead of um, one person because when you see our interview and you see our picture we have a whole room full <laughs> right right it's divide and conquer. Piece of advice. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you again for joining me. This has been uh, illuminating and I and I hope it, it's going to provide both some inspiration and some direction to other folks who are watching this uh, and maybe, you know, spur them on to get involved uh, in the program next year. So oh, congratulations thank again. Thank you. And uh, Thanks, Rick. we will see you soon. Thank you.